Welcome to Deep Americana. Welcome back. I'll be finishing up interviewing Willie Cole this episode. Also with the audio, we have links to his work accompanying the audio. And we go right into it from where we left off. Talking about, you know, his steam iron uh, works representing the people who have been killed by the police. As well as his, his recent endeavors into children's books, uh, new paintings. Um, you know, the process of the children book, you know, kind of rhyming and using his um, theme of shoes and also illustrating. And also talking about how to appropriate your energy for creative projects you're, you're trying to get yourself through or things you want to achieve but you don't understand if you should or not. Without further ado, Willie Cole. Please listen. Bye. I often have asked myself, what is my role during these kinds of times? I remember when the first Gulf War broke out, it's in 1989, 90 or 91, I was doing what I call personal mythology, okay. using the steam iron as if it was a relic from a past society, a tribal society. Once the war broke out, I started to wonder why am I doing these make-believe things when the world is at war? And that's led me to start doing something different during that period of time. So in this era, this COVID area, I'm kind of at the same place again. But now in my life, I can do it all at once. <laughs> so it's not the same way it was back in the 80s and 90s. Well... Well, right. You you know you know what you're doing with those things too. You know, and, yes, and yes. as tools yeah, and stuff. Already said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking the conversation, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. So. Like I started doing, I started doing abstract paintings this uh, summer. Okay. And there, there's no market established for me as a painter. Right. But it's something I need to do for myself. Right. So, you know, I, I have uh, like five different workspaces in my studio. They're all separate from each other. So I won't get distracted by a water bottle if I'm doing a scorch right. or a painting. Right. So that allows you to do all these things at once. Just each one gets a certain amount of time, certain day of the week. So you time so time each I'm, process? Uh no, but I I was telling my girlfriend yesterday that the way to avoid stress is not to live by the hour but to live by the day. Okay, okay. That makes sense. So I have a goal for each piece. Like last night I worked in the shoe studio okay. for four hours because I had a goal to get something done in that space. Okay. I knew I wouldn't finish the piece, but I wanted to get to the point where when I go back there tonight, I'm not continuing where I left off. I'm actually starting a whole new aspect of the project. Does that make it make you feel kind of fresh when you come back to a different exactly. aspect? Awesome. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm also very interested in doing things. I I would use the expression that I wanted to make art the way John Coltrane made music. No problem. Now, all the popular songs, you know, from the 50s and 60s, even the 40s at the beboppers, they were all based on standards. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I Got Rhythm. Right. That song, I Got Rhythm, is also the Flintstones. That's the same song. So is it just the same timing with different lyrics over it? Yeah, what it is is they would in bebop they would take the chord structure of a popular song mm -hmm. and just put new melody on top of it using the same the same notes. Okay. So that's how you say I got rhythm, I got music. That's the same as Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Right. And okay. It's the same key and everything. Uh, Moody's mood for love is the same as I'm in the mood for love. But when I think it was Harry James Orchestra did I'm in the mood for love, James Moody was in the band. So when Moody's solo came, he played a whole, he played a whole totally different memory over those chords. Right. So that song then became Moody's Mood for Love. And that became the standard that the next generation of jazz musicians would play a melody on top of that. But the key that 
ties it all together, it was improvisation. Right. Once you know something, you don't have to do it. You just have to be it. So that once you know, you can break the rules. Yeah, once, they say, once you know, you can blow. Just You're just improvising now. Huh. Said, I know that the words go from A to Z. So I don't have to write the alphabet A to Z anymore. I can mix letters up and make new words. Okay. But I'm still speaking that same language. So, and it does require thought because you are not, you are not a musician or an artist during that time. You are the music or you are the art. Right, you're just that energy. Yes, yes. So I've been working towards that by assigning projects and tasks that like complete in one day. Okay. To get that stream. Like last month, the month of August, I did one drawing every day. Okay. Okay. But I would not think about it. My goal was just to fill up the paper. Right. So I would sit down with a, with a Sharpie and an 18 by 24 sheet of paper and just make a couple of random lines. Where that line would lead me, I would follow it. So the drawings came out like really far out. I mean, my my partner thought they looked like drug drawings. But she never <laughs> did drugs, so she doesn't know what a drug drawing looks like. Right. Right. But they're really interesting. And my dealer said, this is like Willie Cole's art. Uh, my New York dealer says that. Hell yeah. But for me, it was about freeing myself from the burden of art production. From thinking about, I gotta make something, okay, will this sell? Does this look like my work? Whatever, whatever. Right. So this month, I'm doing the same thing with paint. Okay. I'm just, I, I got these canvases nine feet by six feet. I got buckets of paint around me. And I do one a day. Well, are you using a brush or a roller, or how are you going about that? I'm using a brush. Okay. Using a brush. Cool, yeah. man. And they're nine it's feet by six feet. Yes, I'm using lots of brushes, actually. Awesome. The brushes are attached to, like, big bamboo rods. Awesome. So I can step back from it and do it. Awesome. But they have no thought. It's just about the energy. Right. It's just... I always want, I always want to do paintings that were not about anything, because I was an illustrator. Right, right, right. Illustration is a painting that's about something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. I just want my paintings to be about the color and the energy. Are you still? I remember looking at your, uh, I think pastel. I believe I could be wrong. Kind of like impressionistic uh, dashes. Yes. Are you yes, still using very good. primary color in those, or, or yes, in the paintings? These paintings grew out of those out of those pastels. Is that, man, well, you've done you've those, done some homework here. That's interesting. <laughs> Well, I enjoy your work. I decided that, or maybe I realized that in the pastels, those horizontal lines are the energy in the environment. Okay, okay, I can see that. Uh, Because I remember the first one I did, I did it at my grandmother's funeral, like in 1976, in North Carolina. We were having a wake at their house, Mm -hmm. and I'm drawing the people in the room. And I had all these dashes around them. At that time, it didn't. I didn't even think about it, what it was, but I did realize some years later that that was the energy in the room. So in the paintings that I'm doing now, it just dashes different colors. Cool. And different combinations. Right. Um, and, and, I, and I've done only one color a day because <laughs> I'm using house paint. I'm going to let it dry thoroughly. So you're just using one color? Are you, are you using like tonality to it? Or are you just, the mark making is what, what is making it? Yeah, yeah, like currently, I went to Home Depot and they got these color charts. I choose the color charts and I say, give me a pint of each of these. Hmm. So I, don't, I haven't really mixed any colors yet. But okay. it's evolving, you know, it's evolving. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was always saying. Pretty neat when you're when you're when you're deep into something, and and especially creatively, and you even even if you had an idea to start out with, but then it evolves into things that you you know. I, I think that's beautiful, Willie. Um, to to just go with that energy. It have yeah, to be. Is it know, kind of terrifying at first to do that? To just let go. Yes, it is. It's terrifying. Um, that's a word I wish could break down a bit more. Terra meaning Earth. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I'm not sure, but every every uh, 
step towards production is exhilarating and terrifying at the same time. Right. I was going to say maybe terrifying. I don't plan stuff. I don't make any sketches. Right. I just get the objects. Like I just got a pile of bottles in front of me and I play with them. That's... Or a pile of shoes in front of me and I play with it. Right. So I never know what I'm going to get. But it doesn't take, it doesn't require me to know in order to get the results. Right. With these paintings, I, the only decision I made were what colors I would use. And I wanted, to be, I wanted them to be larger than me so I could feel like I was inside of it. Who were you in your past life, do you think? It's funny you should ask that. Uh, I used to think that I was Clifford Brown, the trumpet player. Okay. But uh, I realized about 10 years ago that I wasn't Clifford Brown. <laughs> I, know, I know that I was an artist. Okay. And I say that because I've been making art since I was three years old. Okay. And, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't have any, any, any impetus for it as a kid. It just happened. Okay. My mom walked in the room and she saw me with a piece of paper drawing comics, copied from the Sunday cartoon section in the comic strips. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, to her, it came out of nowhere. So mm -hmm. actually, I must have brought that awareness with me from a previous life. Well, I think it's very, very possible, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you ever have dreams of a previous life or anything? Or any experience um, I that? have dreams, but I can't say where they take place, whether it's present, past, or future. You know, dream time is hard to pinpoint. I feel, I don't know, I feel a lot of stuff, which makes it hard to explain without sounding crazy sometimes. But, you know, I, 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 I feel that you know, definitely, I definitely believe in reincarnation. Excellent. I know that I've, I know that I've lived before. Right. Um, I have not had past life regression or any hypnotic therapy to pinpoint exactly. Do you but, think uh, that would that would help to do that? Like to, to understand well, it things. It would inform, but sometimes that information can direct. Depending on your therapist, you know, they, they, they could, it could be leading. It could influence you, yeah. Yes, yes. Like, I feel that I was a musician in a previous life. Right. Because I, I love music so much now. Right. Um, I feel that I was a, a religious person, like uh, I might have been a monk or something in another life, because I love monastic living now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't know, that's the only way I can, can, can even make guess about it. The things that I enjoy now, out of the clear blue, must have come from somewhere, and that would have been previous existence. I wonder if it's almost like programming for us, you know? Well, I, you know, they say that we only lose, use a certain part of our brain. Those closed chambers may be the containers for our past life existence. That's right. Uh, yeah, we do only use certain parts of our brain. Yeah, I wonder, yeah. wonder how we could unlock that. I think that we can unlock it through meditation, personally. Okay. okay. I, uh, there's, there's a, an author named Joe Dispenza. Okay. I think it's most... The last book I read by him was the title, like, The Art of Not Being Yourself or The Art of, of Letting Go of Yourself, one of those kind of things. And he talks about meditation as a tool to access your deeper consciousness or your deeper awarenesses. Okay. And I think memories of past life existence are in those categories of deeper consciousness and awareness. Getting, getting beyond the distraction. Like a good example is, like I studied transcendental meditation and mm -hmm. they use the metaphor of the ocean. Okay. Say, if you're looking at the ocean, the top surface is all busy with waves and right. you know, all this energy. Right. But the lower, deeper you go, the more calm it, the borders become. Right. And that's the goal of meditation, to get, to get beyond the energy that's bubbling up top and go deeper. <laughs> and in that, in that dive to deeper, deep to the depths, is when you become more in touch with your inner being and possibly your past life awarenesses. Is that like with your experience as well with meditation? 
Is that? Uh, yes, yes. I, okay. I can't. I can't pinpoint that I had seen myself in 1776. Right, 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 right. I but get definitely, you. But definitely, uh, yeah, escaping the turmoil through meditation. I mean, it's, it's clinically proven that uh, it's, it relaxes you and allows you to be more in touch with yourself because we live in the surface world. We, we live in a world of illusion, and the illusion creates energies that communicate to us daily through everything. Walking down the street, you know, watching TV, it's, it's all distraction. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you were not created to work at the gas station. You were not created right. to watch TV. Right. Those are all the distractions to keep you from the awareness of who you really are and what your real purpose is. Now, real purpose is hard to define, um, but you know you can get close to it once you get away from all the distractions. You know, not having stress for me right now in my life has to do with accepting this is my life. Okay. You know? I mean, it doesn't hurt that I've been doing it for over 30 years successfully. Right, right. So why should I stress about it? I've already proven that this is my life, this is my journey, and accepting I'll be doing this the rest of my life, whether it makes money or not. You know, you know one thing I've noticed is with, with myself is that when I quit worrying about paying rent, I had rent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know. Yes, because you, you, you. But you know, that's terrifying to people, man. <laughs> you know. No, I you're, know. Because you're so no. ingrained in, in this this culture and this nine to five and so on and so forth. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that when you saw me speak years ago, I told the stories about how I got my first deal, in. and that story is just I wanted it so bad. You willed it. And it happened. I mean, I'm walking down the street. And uh, I'm going door to door in New York, in Soho, back in those days, gallery to gallery. And I go into a gallery, and they're doing a videotape of the current show, but there's nobody in the gallery except me. So the cameraman asked me to stand near the painting so so the viewers at home would have a sense of scale. I stand by the painting, I I get into it, I stroke my chin, I scratch my head, I take a step back, I take a step forward, I lean in. When it was over, the owner of the gallery said to me, Thank you so much. What do you do? And me, being Johnny on the spot, I had a page of 35 millimeter slides in my jacket pocket. So I ripped it out and slammed on her desk and said, this is what I do. And she became my first dealer. And prior to that time, I had sent slides of my work to galleries all over the world. Right. And received them all back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but just being in the right place at that moment, and being ready, right? Like I have another friend that said, you have to be perfectly poised for a miracle. The miracle could come, but you won't see it because you're not poised for it. Right. So to to recognize that at any moment your life could change, and you're expecting it to change. You know, you're not expecting it to be bad or to fail. You're expecting it to be just like you pictured it. You know, the reality, reality comes in stages. You know, first it's a thought. I mean, I don't know your religion, and I'm not a a Christian kind of religious person. Right. But but some of those lessons I learned as a child in church, like the beginning was the word, mm-hmm. that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you know, I mean, like as a, as a human, I have an idea. So first, I have an idea, right? And now I'm going to write it down. So here's my word, mm-hmm. and then it grows from there. So I think that anything you want in your life starts with that seed. That first seed is the word you hear in your mind. Then it's the word you write on paper. And then it's your, your sketch or your maquette. Then it's the real thing. And reality grows on us in stages. That's why George Bush saying that America's about to go through dark times mm-hmm. had power. Because that was the beginning. He was planting a seed in us as a society that would grow later into, you know, all kinds of turmoil. Oh, my goodness. So much turmoil, man. So much. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Oh, boy. Donald was in Wisconsin, man. Oh, man. Just, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't need... They don't 
didn't oh. want to come either. <laughs> oh man, well, it's like, and I'll be real. It's like, why would you do that? You know, you know, you're stirring people up. Hell, when people are first protesting, he, I think he quoted the KKK or something. Yeah. And like, and it's like, what? Well, it 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 makes me furious a lot of times because it's like, why are you? Why are we dividing people? We need to be together. We need to be community. And you guys want to conquer everybody again for some reason. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's old, old, old habits die hard for some beings. You know, you know, you know, Willie, one of the things that I think of, because I've been raised in the country a lot and things of that, and you may be able to tell by my accent, but what I noticed is when I, when I would go past, and it didn't happen every day, but a, a dying wild animal, you know, that thing would... would would reach out, you know, it's clinging to life. And I feel like a lot of the isms that are going on right now, and I hope, are dying out, and that's why it's so prevalent. Mm. I hope. That's interesting. that's interesting way to look at it. I, I hope, man, because I, I you know, I, I, it just, there's no place for that. We're all human beings. We're all just atoms, yes. implied yeah. atoms. Well, speaking of atoms, have you heard that the day before election, a meteor is supposed to hit the Earth. What? No, I haven't. Yeah, you you check out. Okay. The, uh, now that you said that, okay, and I, you I'm gonna Google it from the NASA website. You can get that information. There's a meteor headed towards our planet. That's I hit the day before election. That's insane. I I don't know. Uh, I have a roommate, and he watches all sides of politics. He's not into Trump. But we, he had Trump giving a speech uh, at one point, and it seemed like he highlighted the end of some, I don't know where, but so, somewhere in his statement. I was like, am I reading too much into this, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's easy to do for sure. You know. It's easy to do. I, I'm thinking, because I, I actually watch a TV show called Ancient Aliens. I love Ancient Aliens. I love it because in the 70s I studied Joseph Campbell a lot I've read every book that he's ever written he's very good and Ancient Aliens to me is like the Joseph Campbell show yeah well the what I love about Ancient Aliens man is everyone's been told no about everything forever and then that show came out and yeah they say yes to everything but I think it's because they're just they're trying to get people to open their minds to be able to see yeah, things yeah. Man. so that show has led me to think that this meteor coming might be the cure to the virus. Okay. You know, it's going to be hidden inside that stone. When it hits the earth, it's going to fracture, and the uh, molecular compounds in the meteor right. are going to be the things that we need to heal. Right. Well, isn't <laughs> is, isn't that isn't that how we've got like psilocybin and mushrooms? Didn't they come from meteors? I'm pretty but sure they did. Have, for sure. Right, right, right. You know, like, uh, so can I ask you why I noticed uh, that, that you have Black Art Matters. Why does Black Art Matter, if I can ask you that? Well, uh, Black Art Matters because images, well, for more than one reason, but first I just said that images inform, uh, you know, history once the history maker is gone, all that's left is the art they made. <laughs> right. And that defines the civilization and the culture that, that existed. Um, it also creates role models. It, it helps It helps build a sense of self that builds drive and individual experiences it. And that has been, had been absent for my generation of African Americans, you know, for a decade, maybe in centuries. Right. You know, I mean, the blackest thing on TV when I was a kid was all derogatory when it comes to humans. Right. Yeah. Or either a cartoon. Right. So, so, in that sentence, black art matters. Mm -hmm. It's it's just graphic reproduction in general. It's not just fine art, but graphic reproduction in general. Okay. Um, of course, it it has in today's world. Currently, a lot of spotlight on, on black artists, you know, a lot of uh, select black artists, and not everybody. Right. But we have a presence in the art world today, and we're changing, changing the aesthetic. You know, the same way that uh, Africans got hold of classical European instruments and changed the music forever. Right. Right, and with the same jazz. Thing's going on with, with the visual arts now, you know. Yeah. Um, 
But mostly for me on a personal side, it, it has to do with having images for the next generation to see that... To be able to learn from? Their history, or at least a more positive view of uh, themselves. Right. And of course, all art is not pictorial. Right. But the black artists, like my paintings here, are about energy. You know, I think about the science of the color, mm -hmm. uh, potential for movement, the way it moves your eye around. You know, so that's my contribution to art this month are these paintings. And those paintings matter because they're teaching people to view energy in a different way. Right. You know, they're showing, they're, a lot of people don't know that we actually live in a world that looks just like those paintings. Right, they don't realize my, color's an illusion. In my living room right now, I'm surrounded by Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, FM, AM, sound, and there's probably at least 10, 20 more kinds of waves that are in here with me right now. Oh, G5, G4. Mm -hmm. They're all, I'm sitting among this, this sea of floating waves of different kinds. So my paintings bring about that conversation because that's what they're about, you know. So that's that's not overtly black, right? You know, but but it it's is the art of a black artist, right? Right. Well, so. you know, I, I want to try to add to that here. The uh, did did you watch the Watchmen at all? Uh, I think I saw the first episode. It has a female lead, right? It's it was a female. Fe female lead. It was based in yeah. Tulsa around the time of the Tulsa Massacre, or no, it, right, yeah, it was so embedded in that history. And so that brought, 100% of what you're saying, relevance to that. You know, I think this is the first year I've seen a, a wide thing about Juneteenth, you know, things of right, that nature, yeah. and it came from this creativity, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. It, it is. I, I, what, what do you think? But I, I feel like in in our schools, like when I was younger, I was taught Christopher Columbus was a hero. You know, that found America, which is insane. And what what do you think about if we actually had? I don't know the correct or maybe transparent education and education towards foreign history as well. Well, I mean, if we started that now, it would take us years to get the results. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's a very, I think it's a very good thing because we do live in lots of lives, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the distraction. That's the media. That's yeah. TV. Even it's uh, fancy shoes. It's all distracting from what life really is. You know? Right. Right. And um, you know, I I'm 65 years old. I grew up. There were no no real role models. Muhammad Ali was the first one, I would say. Okay. And he was controversial, even among black, black people, because he was a Muslim. Right. And in the 60s, a lot of black people were just Bible-thumping Baptists. Okay. So uh, the image and the existence of role models is important in the media. They could see that in a positive way, but they can also distract from it as they, as they have more often than not. But as it, the visual artist can add to that experience for any any consumer, just by being present and letting it be known that this artist is uh, is, is black or of color. Right. Now, I wish that we had no race identified in society. Right, I would love right. just to be an artist. Right. You know, or just a human being. Right. Well, that's. Like, I think. I think we, what we separates us is. We can so crippled by racism that we have to say these things. Right. To pull people up, you know. Right. Right. I think. I think what separates actually our skin tone is like point zero zero nine two chromosome or RNA or DNA. It's it's yeah. just it's not. Yeah. It's nothing substantial, you know. Right. 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 And it's. Uh, it's. It just it's we're in the year 2020 man <laughs> and, and this is going on it's just like it just uh. yeah, it's time for the word human to mean hues like colors yeah 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 and we're all humans you know uh. <laughs> man, I feel I'm off with some I don't know if I'm that's okay I, 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 it, it works great and we'll we'll re-edit this as well <laughs> Not not a lot. This is meant so. So the uh, with with these these interviews, um, they're they're a conversation. But I started this out. Me and a friend of mine, and and we've done 
interviews like years ago for a podcast. But with these, one of the things that, that I noticed is I noticed people looking at, at homeless people kind of funny. And I had a conversation with a guy about homeless people, and he goes, well, I don't know why they choose to be homeless. And I'm like, well, you're missing the whole point. And, and, and so the idea with this, Willie, is to break down barriers by informing each other about each other. You know, in in a lot of ways, you know, it, there's just uh, there's so much stuff, man. Yeah, there is. There mm. definitely is. And it gets deeper. It it gets it gets there. There is just there's a lot, and I, I look at it, and it at times, especially right now, it's just like we're sowing so much division. Mm-hmm. In in a lot of ways, and it's just it's heartbreaking. You know, but there's a lot of progress as well. So, so man, when when are we gonna hit hear a Willie Cole album? When are we gonna see a children's book or, or see a movie that you scripted? Oh, you you see the book soon. Man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you've done a lot of homework here for this conversation. I have a book I'm working on now. And it's based on one of my sculptures. I started writing it two years ago in a hotel in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Okay. And I thought it was great when I left the hotel. When I got back home, I had two commissions, water bottle commissions, so it took me away from the project for about three months. When I got back to the project again, I read through it. It didn't seem, it seemed more like an Edgar Allan Poe uh, piece that it did a children's book. <laughs> so I have been working to simplify it ever since then. Okay. And uh, I have some interest in it, so I, I hope to get it done this year. Excellent. It, um, it, it's uh, it's about I have a sculpture that I call Shoe Fly. It's actually a fly made out of shoes. So I decided the Shoe Fly is the bug that flies in a woman's ear to convince her to buy more shoes. Oh, wow. Okay. So I've been writing about that in rhyme, you know. I mean, I wrote and published two children's stories back in the 70s. Okay. They were all, like, rhyming, rhyming. I was a big fan of the poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Okay. uh, Back in the 60s and 70s. So I was writing in that style. And, of course, I illustrate, illustrate my stories. So that'll be coming soon, but I have so many things that I want to do in my life. The virus has made everything seem more immediate, but I haven't break down my to-do list based on what I can afford to do in that moment. Energy-wise, as well as monetarily, and, and like I want to build, I want to build a tiny house on my property here okay. as a guest house. But it's not a priority. It's not more important than casting a bronze sculpture, you know. Right, right, right. right. So it's every, it's everything falls into that, into that kind of uh, under that lens. So it's like very it's, organic. Yes, yes. That's like nice. I, I have studied a lot of writing and screenplays, and I have a shelf with four screenplays that I like. I think they need a little polishing. But in my lifetime, I hope to see one of them on a big screen. But it's not a priority in this moment for me, so I just let it sit. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, you said we met in Kansas. Yeah, we did. We met in Wichita, Kansas. Before one of your talks, I was going to this college at WSU. Okay. So, yeah. Early on in my college art career, I randomly met Willie Cole outside the WSU... Uh, art building on the balcony and we shared a cigarette and I had no idea who he was and then I went in and he pretty much it blew my mind the concept of, of Jesus the last supper levi- levitating a, a automatic rifle you know in in this this hit after 9/11 whereas there was you know the, this idea of terrorism was terrorizing America you know for some reason um so with that, uh, thank you for joining us and listening to Willie Cole on Deep Americana. Have a good evening.